Now, while they are projecting, I was listening to a song I've been listening to for over, I've been singing this song for over 30 something years of my being born again. I didn't know that the wordings we were singing wasn't correct. I saw it on my wife's phone for the first time yesterday. You know, in our days, we used to sing the most excellency is Jesus. It was yesterday night I just discovered that it is the most excellent king. So I can call the most excellency is. <laughs> so it was yesterday I discovered it was uh, it was clearly stated written the most excellent king. Then the other one we used to sing praise the Lord. It's not too single single. <laughs> I discovered it was praise the praise the Lord. Oh sing oh my soul. Oh sing oh my soul praise and I've. That something years I've been born again. We've been singing. If I in the fellowship, the brothers those days, we now even put bass, put treble, put all, you know. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. So, I'm saying, oh, single, 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 single. I shot on you, oh, Lord, in she calling it. Our love change it. Let's be on our feet so that we can read together. I will read verse one. You read verse two till we get to verse thirteen. I think verse thirteen will unify us. I read. In the course of time, Absalom provided himself with a chariot and horses and with 50 men to run ahead of him. Now you read verse 2, let's go. Absalom would rise early and stand beside the way to the gate. So it was, whenever anyone had a lawsuit, came to the king for a decision that Absalom would call to him and say, what city are you from? And he will say, your servant is from such and such a tribe of Israel. Verse 3, I read verse 3, I join you in your own. Then Absalom would say to him, look, your case is good and right, but there is no one dep 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 deputy of the king to hear you. There is no one deputy of the king to hear you. Now you read verse 4, moreover, Absalom will say, Oh, that I were made judge in the land. And everyone who has any suit or case or cause, sorry, would come to me. Then I would give him justice. I read verse 5. And so it was whenever anyone came there to bow down to him, that he would put out his hands and take him and kiss him. Verse 6. Let's go. In this manner, Absalom acted toward all Israel who came to the king for judgment. So Absalom stole the heart of the men of Israel. I read verse 7. Let's see verse 7. Now it came to pass after 40 years that Absalom said to the king, please let me go to Hebron and pay the vow which I made to the Lord. Verse, you read verse 8. Yes, let's go. For your servant took a vow while I dwelt at Geshur in Syria, saying, If the Lord indeed bring me back to Jerusalem, then I will serve the Lord. Hmm. Don't use the word serve, it's serve. Hmm? Yes, yes. Okay, let's go on. <laughs> Verse 9. And the king said to him, Go in peace. So he arose and went to Hebron. Now you read verse 10. That's your verse. Let's go. Then Absalom sent spies throughout all the tribes of Israel, saying, As soon as you hear the sound of the trumpet, then you shall say, Absalom reigns in Hebron. I read verse 11. That's my verse. And with Absalom went 200 men invited from Jerusalem. And they went, they went along innocently and did not know anything. They didn't know the intention of Absalom. Now you read verse 12. Let's go. Then Absalom sent for Aitophel, the Gileonite, David's counselor for his, from his city, from Gileo, while he offered sacrifice. And the conspiracy grew strong for the people with Absalom Continually increased in number. Let's read verse 13 together. Well, I'm going to stop. Let's go. Now, 
a messenger came to David saying, The hearts of the men of Israel are with Absalom. Father, we ask for a word from your throne in this leadership meeting this month in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Have your seat in his presence. Thank you for standing up to honor God's voice with me. Now, this morning I have, um, by the grace of God, four things we are going to point. We are going to learn from this reading. Four major points. I come again. Four major points from this reading for our blessing. And I title it the error of Absalom. The error of Absalom. So in our class this morning, uh, I want us to learn, you know, when people make mistakes, don't just laugh at them. Look at their mistake very well and pick the lessons. Now, if you can pick lessons from people's mistakes, you will not fall into their own mistake. Did you get it? So let's start with number one. The first thing I want us to see here, I call it uh, error one. His gateway into leadership was very wrong. Now, Look at the way Absalom smuggled himself into leadership. I will explain. The Bible says he sat at the entrance. It's just like as uh, uh, the church is now. Let somebody sit down at the entrance. And every day people are coming to church to come and pray. Let the person be telling them something else. You know, showing them another church. Showing them another pastor. And all of a sudden, after he had done that for some years, he just went and made announcement that, well, this is the new gospel evangelical mission. Now let's go over to the other side. Can I tell you this truth? If your gateway into leadership is deception, you can't last there. You can't follow a deceptive way into leadership and last. I wrote here, he, he's, he entered leadership by deception. He entered leadership. Anything you gather by deception, go and find out. It's not the curse. Or let me not put it directly to you. Anything anyone gather on the platform of deception can never last. Boom, boom. Continue about fear. That's why, see, in being able to last anywhere, be real. Don't pretend to be who you are not. Be real. Be yourself. If there are areas that you need to be worked upon, they will work on you. But don't deceive yourself and enter into leadership by deception. The Bible says, if the foundations be destroyed, what shall the righteous do? I wrote here, he lied to the people that there was nobody available to, you know, to listen to them. That the king did not make, make anybody available to listen. So when they are coming, we came to see the judge. There used to be judges there before now. There, was judge, there were judges listening to the people's cases before. But as uh, uh, Absalom stood at the gate, he made them believe, ah, there is nobody there is nobody here except me. There's no, that's falsehood. Understand it clearly. Especially when you are coming into leadership. And the leadership is leadership of church. It should not be built on falsehood though. If it is built on falsehood, you will see what eventually happened to him. Let's learn from him. So he kept telling people that there was nobody available. You know, for, uh, for, to listen to them. And he deceived them. The Bible says he stole their hearts. I wrote here. Before it is important, sorry, because it is important you know that whatsoever is built on deception will never stand the test of time. I come again. Whatsoever is built on deception will never stand the test of time. Whatsoever is built on deception will never stand the test of time. I was listening to, uh, yesterday, I was yesterday or day for yesterday on Arise TV that our new president is having his first major test. Of being president. And what is the test? Should Nigeria lead ECOWAS to go into battle against Niger or North? Now, they have sent the people that will go and discuss, led by the former general uh, Abdul Salam, Abdul Salami Abu Bakr. They have gone to discuss. The Nigerians are saying, no, we will not agree. We are not going to come back to democracy. Now, and it is not left to. And you know, he's a, he's a chairman of ECOWAS, our president. Now, and everybody's watching him now. What will he do? Our military, our military men are getting ready. Do we go to war? Do we not go to war? Now, this is the first test of his leadership experience. It is now we are going to know if we have an intelligent president or not. Every leadership will go through a testing period. Hello, hear me. 
whether you are starting up a business, you are running a family, you are a church leader, a leader anywhere, if you smuggle yourself into it, the test of time will expose you. That's why you don't struggle to get into leadership. You don't deceive people to get in. I will show you how. How to get into leadership. I've seen people in family leadership that their, their family lives cut a tore apart because they entered into it wrongly. So deception is what? It's pretense. Deception is falsehood. Deception is showing to be who you are not. That's what deception is. Deception is pretense. Deception is falsehood. Deception is showing who you are not. You know, it's just like when you are cutting a guy, uh, you know, and you are saying, okay, the guy is introducing you around. This is my fiancé. By the grace of God, we are going to get married. My fiancé is a good cook. When you yourself know that all the food you are giving him to eat is not you, you didn't prepare it. Anytime he's coming to your house to visit you, you know, you have told your mom or your sister or you have even gone to uh, uh, a fast food joint to get food. You now pretend and say, ah, in fact, I cook this food, delicious food just for you. And he's eating, you know, with this confidence, I'm, I'm, by the grace of God, I'm going to get married to a wife. I'm going to get married. My wife is a good cook. Yeah, the test of time will expose you. Because it will get to a point, you'll be married now, Abby. You will live under the same roof. Then it will be time for you to prepare food. Now, will you be opening Google to say, okay, how many minutes will the beans take before I put palm oil? How many minutes will it take before I... You'll be exposed. That's why. See, stop pretending to be who you are not. Decide to be real. Absalom smuggled himself. By deception, he became a leader. I will tell you something as we go on. Listen, I wrote here, Absalom missed it from the foundation because when you succeed to enter anywhere by deception, you'll be thrown out as time exposes you. Because time will definitely expose you. Now, what is the gateway to leadership? What's the gateway to lasting anywhere? I wrote down here in my note, and I want you to take note of it and register it in your heart. Hear me. You should enter and stay in leadership by your consistent, exceptional, good performance. What will keep you standing anywhere? Your consistent, exceptional, good performance. What should keep you standing anywhere? Let's say together, my what? My consistent, exceptional, good performance. Listen, if your performance is exceptional, if your performance is good, and if you are consistent, not that you do it today, stop tomorrow, you are consistent with it, I'm telling you the fact, you will last wherever you find yourself. That's one thing I want you to understand. Because you can't pretend for too long. You can't do what? You can't pretend for too long. That's why this morning, I want us to understand that the, the greatest uh, uh, principle that you need to up uphold is exceptional, consistent, good performance. If there's anything you should uphold, uphold it. Don't joke with it. Exceptional, consistent good performance let's say together exceptional consistent good performance let's go again exceptional consistent good performance i didn't hear you say exceptional consistent good performance let's go again one last time exceptional consistent good performance look at proverbs chapter 12 and verse 24 put it on screen for us proverbs chapter 12 and verse 24 this is what will keep you standing wherever you are found. Because you can be given a position by luck. But you can't maintain any position by luck. Let's read. The Bible says, the hand of who? The diligent. What will happen to you? We rule. But the lazy man will be put to forced labor. The hand of the diligent. A diligent person is a hardworking person. A hardworking person is a person with exceptional, consistent service. That's what it takes to stay at the top. I come again. This is what it takes to stay at the top. One of us was asking me after service on Sunday. He said, sir, now you have made us ministers. You have chosen us. I said, yes. I'm now minister so and so. He said, what is your expectation from me? What is God's expectation from me? Sir, 
and what is the church expectation from me? I said, let us put, let's arrange this well. My own should be last. Let's go home be first. I said, God's expectation of you is clear. God's word says, live a life that is worthy of the calling that you profess. Now, which means when they see your calling and look at your lifestyle, they, there shouldn't be difference. When they see your calling, shouldn't be different. And they see your lifestyle. Now, that is what it means to be exceptional, exceptional, consistent, you know, and be different. And they see your lifestyle. That, now, that what is what it means to be exceptional, exceptional, consistent. He thought being great is just finding yourself to the top. See, can I tell the truth? Absolutely. Getting to the top is the easiest part of life. He thought being great is just finding yourself to the top. See, can I tell the truth? Absolutely. Getting to the top is the easiest part of life. Becoming a pastor only is just finding yourself to the top. This is my 25 years of pastoring this church. 28 years of being a pastor. I know so many people that we started church together. Starting is not difficult. I know of people that went to their family members, they gathered money for them, they did inauguration service and tried to run the ministry for some years and that was the end. In leadership, you have to be consistent. In leadership, you have to be exceptional. Beloved, in leadership, you have to have good performance. I'm talking about leadership in all areas. Leadership in church, leadership in our nation, leadership in your family, even leadership over your own self. Say I hear. Now look at the second scripture. Proverbs 22, 29. Proverbs chapter 22 and verse 29. Look at this. The Bible says, do you see a man who excels hmm, in his work? He excels in the way he does his work. What will happen to him? He will stand before kings. He will not stand before unknown men. A man that is, that ex, to excel means he's exceptional. He goes, he, he stands out, yes. He is going beyond others when it comes to his performance at work. I told you during my birthday, that's the kind of vision I have. I want to become an exceptional Christian. I want to become an exceptional husband. I want my wife to be proud that yes, this is my husband. I want to become an exceptional father. I want my children to look at me and say, Daddy, we are, this is my dad. That's my dad. You know, I had a story many years ago. It was an MC of an event that said it. It was in a where, no, it was a wedding or a graduation ceremony. He said this man drove his son in his car and they drove to that event. It was a graduation ceremony in a secondary school. And uh, they were giving awards. As they were giving awards, the father of this young brother was a businessman. And uh, they called the first man best in English language. They mentioned his name. As he was going, the father looked at his son and said, Surely, um, that's, that's a child. They called again best in mathematics. They called another one. As he was going, the father looked at him again and said, Can you see? Oh, to see that um, that's a son going. They got best in all the subjects and he kept mocking his son. Then when they were going home, as they got to the gates to go out, the parents of those, those uh, 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 children that were given a word were coming to hug their, 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 their children. And the boy looked at his daddy and said, Daddy me, I want Baba Nye. Ah! I want Baba no asao. He said, I want Baba. Oh, Lee will king pay for I want Baba. Who see textbook with one baby in school, Tim Wanla, found one more. I want Baba Lee. Ah, in fact, one man by one more, John Joko by Tom John Shasa, I meant to Lee. I want Baba. The father now look at him. Which means the son did not seem as responsible enough to stay in any part of leadership. Beloved, just like I said, look at that scripture. He said, he that excels with his work. So, whatever position you, you occupy, excel in your work, you will see that God by himself will keep promoting you. Let's go deeper. I wrote here, let your result take you into leadership. Let it 
be the reason why you are promoted. Don't lobby for promotion. But let your results be the reason why you are promoted. Just like what is happening in society today. I always tell young ladies, you don't need to beg a man to marry you. In fact, it's an insult on your personality for you to beg a brother to marry you. Go search scripture now. You were taken from, from where? From the inner part. And God said he that findeth a wife, which means a wife is cast. The man needs to do a lot of work to find you. Now, what does it take a man to be looking for you? The man must see some except, exceptional qualities. Ah, ah, no, this kind of a lady. It's not the one that you say, uh, hello, you, you, are, you, are, you are only trying to woo her and the next thing she's sending you her account number. You are only trying to talk to her. The next thing she's telling you that uh, you need to recharge her phone. You know, that, that sign I've shown that uh, this one will become a burden to your life. But with exceptional qualities of, I always tell my daughters, you yourself become something before a man comes into your life. That man will respect you for life. The man should not be the reason why you are becoming something. Become something. Take your academic serious. Come out with something good. When that man comes into your life, he will try. Because he knows that you were already something before he came. Am I communicating? Let your result be the reason why you are brought into leadership. I wrote here, David was busy with the ships when God found him for leadership. Saul was busy looking for his father's missing donkey when God found him for leadership. But look at Absalom. Absalom was busy backbiting. Absalom was busy betraying when he made way for himself. Don't make way for yourself. Let your gift, let your performance, let your exceptional quality be the one to make way for you. May the Lord help you. May he uphold you in the name of Jesus. I wrote here, beloved, face your primary assignment and continue to do it well and watch God lift you up just like he did in the life of Joseph in Genesis 39. Let's see it. 3 to 6. Genesis chapter 39 from verse 3 to verse 6. Look at how Joseph became great in the house of Potiphar. Can we see together? The Bible says, and his master saw that the Lord was with him and the Lord made all he did to prosper in his hands. Can you see? The master was observing his slave. Verse 4. We stop at verse 6. Look at what. So Joseph found favor in his sight. You know, if you are just praying, Lord, give me the, the favor of Joseph in verse 4. Ah, and you didn't read verse 3. It's not just by prayer. Things prospered in the hands of Joseph. So the, the master had no choice than to like him. And the Bible says, and served him. They made him overseer. Can you see? The master made him overseer. Not just because the grace of God was upon him, but because everything that was put in his care was doing well. Ah, may good things do well in your hands. And all that he had put under his, and all that he had, the Bible says he put under his authority. The next verse, we'll stop at verse 6. Everything he had, he put under his authority. So it was from the time that he made him overseer of his house and all that he, he had, that the Lord did what? The Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake. And the blessing of the Lord was on all that he had in the house and in the field. Then, look at Potiphar's conclusion in verse 6. Ah, this guy that I've employed. Thus, he did what? He left all that he had in Joseph's hands. And he did not know what he had except for the bread which he ate. Now, Joseph was handsome in form and appearance. Can you see how he was promoted? He was promoted because he was performing. Listen, understand this clearly. Don't deceive people to enter into any position. Consistently excel in your performance. And I'm telling you the fact, you will see yourself. Going to the top. Say so here. Number two. The second error of Absalom that I want us to see is in 2 Samuel chapter 15 verse 12. Look at verse 12. I want us to read it. Another error of Absalom. Don't make that mistake. Verse 12 of 2 Samuel 15. 
Verse 12. Leba sata yanga rabase. Are you there? Yes, let's read together. One, two, three, and let's go. Then Absalom sent for Ahitophel, the Gilead knight, David's counselor, from his city, from Gilead, while he offered sacrifices. And the conspiracy did what? Grew strong. For the people with Absalom continually increased in number. Now look up. Understand this fact. The backing of the strongest men on earth will not guarantee victory for you in an assignment God didn't send you. Should I come again? The backing of the strongest men on earth will not guarantee victory for you in an assignment God didn't send you. Now, if I put it in a layman's language, it means that, see, whatever God is not the one giving to you, no matter the millions of people behind you, he can't stay with you. Do you understand? The Bible says, and Absalom rejoiced. Hey, my father's counselor is with me. The Bible says, day by day, people were joining him. And the conspiracy was strong, but it didn't last. That's why, those of you that are leaders here, Stop thinking that if you are talking to the people, if I'm close, ah, it's about a close man when you're, ah, a close man when you're, I come out your pastor for loving your con, ah. Allah lo mak bimi, Allah lo mak bimi share around me. I always tell people, Allah lo kwe mi lo bimi around me. It's not that we didn't break out from anywhere. There is nobody that says that will say, ah, you know, Pastor Prince, we say, eh, Pastor Prince, took me from my pastor. No, 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 no. All our people were born again here, raised here, except for those of us who were joining us later. The Bible says, vain is the help of men in the days of trouble. Many years ago, I told one of our sisters, only in this name of, I want to just get married this year, I want to get married this year, I told her, sister, calm down. No, pastor, no, pastor. So she packed into a brother's house. Got pregnant for the brother. And I invited her after service one day. Sister, this brother haven't done anything over you. Moreover, you just moved. Do you know his family member? I, said, nah, nah, I want to get married this after I'm pregnant. I'm secured. I told her one prophecy. One, uh, one scripture. I said, see ma. Hey guy was pregnant for Abraham. And even gave birth to his son for Father Abraham, I'm telling you a story of 17 years ago. For Father Abraham, the day they chased her out, they couldn't give her anything except for bread and a jug of water. Ah, and she gave back to Abraham's first son. I said, sister, he said, sir, lo and behold, she was still pregnant, sir, when the family of this guy came from the east. You know how the Hebrews do? A big kissy. Where did you come from? Our family doesn't know you. They chased her out with the pregnancy. Where she was thinking, getting worried, the baby died in her womb. She gave birth to a stillbirth. When she came back to me, I said, But I told you. Moving to his house is not a security that you are married to him. Do it right. That's the same thing that happens in leadership. Even you that are doing business. My dear old guy, let's say. See, that's not what we guarantee your stay at the top. Because if you plant evil seed, there's what we call the law of seed time and harvest. Absalom thought as long as I have Absalom, uh, I took her, but see problem. And 200 men came from Jerusalem. Choice men. No ni problem. Follow the reading. Absalom thought with the backing of Aitophel, the Gileonite, 
David's best counselor. His stay in leadership will be secured. What people don't know is that, listen, genuinely called leaders are king makers, not king seekers. Let me say that again. One thing a lot of you don't know, genuinely called leaders are king makers, not king seekers. They don't go around looking for people's help. Is that baby in the church? Please attend to the baby, please. Oh, she's looking for the mom. <laughs> Father can never be like Mother Lila. You are to fish your mom. Those children, when they see their mommy, they know. But when they grow to a point, they know when to leave their mommy. To now shift attention to daddy. So let's concentrate. To understand this. If you see any man that calls himself a leader. Running after rich people. Go and find out. It's fake. Genuine leaders make kings. Fake leaders seek kings. To the glory of God. Though, you know our mama. We went to dedicate the school of one of us. Went to dedicate, uh, we went to the end of the session party. I go there every year to bless that school. When I asked them their, their present attendance, there are 250 students. So when they were introducing us, they said they were they were the, the, the vision started with them because I was dedicating their land that they want to build their own house. They were tenants that time. As I closed my eyes to lay my hand on the ground, I said, I see school. Ah, I see school in your hands. Muri school or what? I see school in your hands. Ah. She said, I, I mean, no, the woman, the wife, I didn't know that the woman studied education in school. She said, no, ah, no, she wants to do business. So, ah, she wants to be, do business, no fashion to go. business, no fashion to go. Ah, business, you know, I hate school. Like, but the husband caught the vision and told her, you know, our pastor, he doesn't always talk. But once he says he sees something, he has seen it. As we're driving towards that school, I was showing my wife, I said, this is the complex of one of us. When they join, I went to San Antonio school. When those that build the, com I also went to bless the land. When they bought the land, they finished the complex and the building behind. When they join us, they couldn't feed well. I remember I took a teaching that time. I was teaching them how to save money and buy car. This woman was a tailor in her, inside her room. She didn't have shop. And with the teachings, she was able to get a shop from her savings. She quickly came to tell me, Papa, Papa, I got a cover, I save a woman, I got a shop. With the teachings, she came and said, Papa, I got a new one, I got a new It will become one of my own testimonies that I taught you, but they bought the car. And today, as I was passing, I said, Pastor MC, see they are complex. The man kept calling me saying, sir, the bag be dead. He be related, dedicated for complex. The bag be dead. Can you see what God has done? Genuinely called leaders don't seek for kings. They make them. If you are running after kings, they will devalue you. They will like you at the beginning. But after some time, they will know the difference. You know why they will now like you later? They will know the difference. That this one is a chopper. The other one is a maker. So stop running after people. Those of you that are departmental heads, I will praise God for your life. Not for when, uh, 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 when professionals come to join you. But when you make from ordinary people professionals, look at what is happening in the technical department. Sister Mola doesn't know Abi, red button from black button from to green button before. But Brother Tunji raised her. We didn't miss him during the convention. I know that the only area we will miss you if there's, there's a technical fault. That's where a leader is. If you are not there and you are missed and you are a leader, you are not a leader. Because leaders are king makers. I 
Absalom didn't know that one. He thought with, with Ahitophel. Who made Ahitophel? These were part of the 400 people that were in debt. That were discontent. But David must have said, Ah, ah, but boy, because why could Malufrai? I don't think you are here. And he built him to the point that the Bible says the council. I wrote, I think I wrote that scripture. I want us to see it. Let me show you who I I to fell was. The uh, uh, I think that should be Holy Spirit. Where did I write it? Show me 2 Samuel 16, 23. No, no, 16, uh, 17, 23. Let me see. 17, 23. Let me be sure. If it's not that one, go back to 16, 23. Okay, 16, 23. 16, 23. 16, 23. Let's read together. Look at Aitofel. One, two, let's go. Now, the advice of Ahitophel, which he gave in those days, was as if one had inquired at the oracle of God. Keep what is at the oracle of God. Can you see his advice was as if you, you, you went to the oracle and you say, Lord, speak, and God spoke directly. If Ahitophel advised you, you don't need to say, I want to go and pray. So Absalom was thinking that with this kind of man behind me, I'm secured. Hello, leaders. In my tribe, we used to say, you don't pay attention to the noise in the market. Who do you pay attention to? The person you are transacting with. Face your assignment. That's why. Don't listen to people that will be coming to tell you, they want to drive you from your assignment. The, the backing of Aitofel cannot secure your stay. So everybody that is here, don't jump into an assignment that God did not give you. Are you here? What people don't know, like I said, true or genuinely called leaders are kingmakers, builders of champions. They are not king seekers. That's why I thank God for your lives. When some of you came, you were not, you were just like at zero point. And I know that the generation after us shall be greater than us. Amen. I didn't hear your amen. amen. That's why we are pushing them into schools now. No backing of any man can secure you in a leadership position God did not give you. No backing of any man can secure you in a leadership position God did not give you. Understand that very well. No backing of any man can secure you. I summarize our second point by writing on my notes that one million Aitofel could not keep him in leadership. Number three. So stop seeking the help. Don't think that if you have backing of men, you are secured. Hmm. Number three. Third lesson. Third error of Aitofel. Second Samuel chapter 15 verse 31. Second Samuel 15 31. I'm desperate for you. Uh, uh, uh. Are you there? I am desperate for you, Lord. Uh, uh, uh. Yes, oh God. Lord, it is me. Come back. Then someone told David, look at this, saying, Aitofel is among the conspirators so, with Absalom. Look at what David did. 
And David said, Oh Lord, I pray, turn the counsel of Ahitophel into foolishness. Hey! Hey! You know what I saw when I read that passion? Pay attention. Absalom and Ahitophel did not know that the wisdom of Ahitophel was given to him by God for the leadership of David, not, for, not against him. Now, I want you to understand this fact. If Ahitophel had known that God blessed him with wisdom for David's kingdom, he wouldn't have fought against David. There are certain gifts that God is giving to you. For, he doesn't give gifts without purpose. That there are some gifts he's given to you, like God told one of our men in church. He said God told him that God said he will bless him because of God's five evangelical mission. Now, imagine if such a person now begins to rise because God is blessing him against the church. That was why David was bold enough to look up and say, Lord, turn the wisdom of this man. Turn foolishness. And beloved, God answered the prayer. Because the next counsel that he gave, they didn't follow it. Absalom did not even listen to him. And that's one thing too that so many assistant pastors in churches don't understand. Because they don't understand the mystery of their senior pastor's ministry. You know what some of them now begin to do? I'm not going to start my own. After all, God is using him. God is using me. You know why I brought up this place? No matter how gifted, blessed, rich, God has raised you. Please remain humble. Don't allow your gift, your callings, and the things you have, your talent, enter your head. Oh Lord, turn the, the wisdom of Ahitophel, turn foolishness. Ah. They didn't know that God gave David the power to stop it from functioning because it was actually given to him for David's sake. So David can stop it from functioning. I wrote here, remain humble. There are certain gifts God gave you because of his servants. Don't use it against him. Now look at, as Nijay said, okay now, we are, we are not going to agree with whatever Nigeria is saying. If they want to go to war, they should mind their business. What did Nigeria do for us? We cut off power supply. Our lafu one, you know? All the lights that they are using in Nijay, Nigeria is the one giving. So the first thing, to show you that we don't, eh, you, got, you want to prove to us, because Nijay is not up to Lagos. The whole one country. You want to prove to us that you can stand it? Bah, they cut off light. The whole Nijay now is in darkness. Let's begin to understand though, when God is blessing you, as God is raising you, be asking him, why are you raising me? Lord, why are you blessing me? And once he tells you the purpose for why he's doing it, maintain it. I wrote here, see how a word of prayer David offered finished Ahitophel. Look at 2 Samuel 17, 23. The man died of in frustration. 2 Samuel 17, 23. Now, when Ahitophel saw that his advice was not followed, eh? You know, for the first time, he, had, he gave an advice and somebody did not follow. He saddled a donkey and arose and went home to his house, to his city. Then he put his household in order and hung himself and died. And he was buried in his father's tomb. Now, 
Lead us be sensitive. Don't allow the spirit of pride to push you against the one you are supposed to follow. Kill every of me. Kill every of me. I had the case like that. In, it was in, in okay. In redeem, it was in redeem. They transferred some pastors because they do their transfer every two two years. So one of the pastors, because the church where he was being, tra- he was he had been he had been staying, he had, had flourished. I know how some of you members you do. Ah, sir, we anointed God by the way, love. Don't let them push you. I want it that way. <laughs> I'm my wife were discussing her at home. As she is, she may not have recovered from her mommy's death. Some of you may not know. Because she didn't cry. She looks strong. She may still be battling. <laughs> we discuss it at home. That some of you are saying, okay, okay. she's like, only my get her. My own, it was two years after my mom's death that I was rushed to the hospital. They now discovered my blood pressure was extremely high. And you know, Sister Bulu has not yet gotten married. I'm going to teach her for her. 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 It's true. I'm going to teach her for her. So, I'm going to teach her for her. With humble heart. Because there was a time they were the one lady. I'm going to teach her for her. I'm going to teach her for her. But just like only uh, 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 is this like some of them are going to like Jesus is Lord. Please, this number three is all about you remaining what? Humble. No matter what you have, remain humble. No matter what you are, remain humble. Just humble yourself. Don't let anyone make you feel that you are the one. Let's take the last one and close. This one is a long reading. Let me see if I can rush through. 2 Samuel 18, 9 to 15. Look at how he died. It was the same mold that he set up. You know, it was in chapter 15. The Bible says he gathered 50 men and uh, set up a mold that was carrying him around. Chapter 15. Go to chapter 15 verse, um, is it 3 or 4? Let's say 3 or 4. Quickly go back to 15. Thank you. And Absalom would say to, no, 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 no. Go to verse 5. Let's see. I'm waiting for you. And it was so, whenever anyone, ah, look for it and just press it. I am desperate for you, Lord. Look for it for me. Oh, oh, I am desperate for you. I am desperate for you, Lord. Where are you? Are you no Bible students there? That the Bible says he gathered 50 men to go ahead of him. Verse what? Uh, 
I am desperate for you, Lord. Uh, uh, uh. I am desperate for you, Lord. Verse what? Are you there? Okay, it's in verse 1. And after this, it happened that Absalom provided himself with a chariot and horses and 50 men to run before him. Now, now go to that. 2 Samuel 18 from verse 9. It was that same horse that, that led him to his death. Then Absalom met the servants of David. Ab yes. Absalom rode on a mall. The mall went under the thick boughs of a great tabret tree. And his head did what? Caught in the tabernet. net. So he was left hanging between heaven and earth. And the mole which was under him did what? Went on. <coughs> Can you see that? What, what pushed him? I want, to, I want to believe that that mole is what? Is greed. Represents greed. That mole can, be, can also represent uh, uh, that he was not contented with what he had. It led him to the place of his death. What is that thing leading you? It is the Holy Ghost that must lead you. Don't let any other thing lead you except from the Holy Ghost. Some, it is bitterness that is leading them. Once in Binu, Nun Bimi, Nun Bimi, Pastor, Nun Bimi, see church. And it's leading them. It's leading them. They will be told, hang your own see. Look at how he died. And he didn't even die like that. Read on. You will see that the men, it was, the men didn't want to kill him, but uh, 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 Joab, next verse. Next verse, verse 10. Now, a certain man saw it and told Joab and said, I just saw Absalom hanging in a tablet tree. He's hanging, sir. Now, a certain man saw it so, where, where am I? so Joab said to the man who told him, you just saw him and why did you not strike him there to the ground? I would have given you ten shekels of silver and a belt, a champion's belt. But the man said to Joab, ah, though I were to receive a thousand shekels of silver in my hand, I would not raise my head though, against the king's son. For in our hearing, the king commanded an abishia and Itaya saying, beware, lest anyone touch the young man, Absalom. I will, maybe by next month, we are going to study Joab. Because he too was a very bad, bad, bad person. Even after the king had destructed. Verse 13. Otherwise, I would have dealt falsely against my own life. For there, there is nothing hidden from the king. And you yourself would have set yourself against me if I had killed him. Verse 14. Verse 14, be fast you already exhausted time. Verse 14. Then Joab said, I cannot linger with you. And he took three spears in his hand and thrust them through Absalom's heart while he was still alive in the midst of the tablet tree. Verse 15. After he had struck and ten young men who bought Joab's armor surrounded Absalom and struck and killed him. Look at his end. Can you see the danger of falsehood? Beloved, I want to summarize by saying the only thing that will guarantee your entrance and stay at the top is what? Consistent, exceptional, hmm? good performance. You are very good students. Your memories are very, very, your memories are very, very sharp. Let's come again. The only thing that will guarantee your entrance at the top and stay at the top is what? Exceptional, consistent, good performance. Be the best version of yourself in anything you do. Are you hearing me? Make up your mind. You'll be the best version. As I said, I want to be the best husband. You two decide to be the best husband over your wife, your family. All wives decide to be the best wife. That if your husband goes out, he will have no reason 
to look for another woman. No, I have everything that I want in a woman in my wife. Children, decide to be the best children ever. Because your parents, as parents too, decide to be the best. And those of you working as leaders here, please don't join the deceptive group. Don't join the group to say, no, no, we, we, we won't agree. No. Understand that gateway to the top is consistent, exceptional, good performance. Let's be on our feet. Be on your feet and begin to speak in tongues. Say, Lord, use me. Strengthen my hands for work. Strengthen my hands for work. Lord, it is me, the one you saved. It is me. Lord, it is me, the one you died for. It is me. Continue to pray. I am desperate. For you, Lord, oh, 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 I am desperate for you, Lord, oh, 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 oh. Lord, strengthen my hands for work. Help me, O oh God. That I will be the best version of myself. Begin to pray for yourself. I rebuke the spirit of greed. You spirit of covetousness. I rebuke you. Spirit of laziness. I rebuke you. I ask for grace to be consistent. In my good performance. I ask for the grace to be exceptional. Not to give up on myself. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Today is our anointing service. I will anoint you.